Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over the last division of other classes and this will be a short video. One of the first things I wanted to mention was when you're documenting, uh, I got some links that gave me a big long page after page of documents or scroll after scroll of documents and I had no idea where to look nor did I want to. Now if you're going to give the judge an image, let me show you how to do that if it's a long link. So let's say you want to show in the Extreme Cowboy Race. I have opened ExtremeCowboyAssociation.com and a lot of people would just copy that and give me that as the link. However, you don't want the judge looking through all the pictures and you have to scroll, it's a pain. What you can do instead is pick your picture, so let's say this one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open image in new tab. Then if I click on the tab, it's just that picture. Now you can provide both links or you can provide just this link just makes it a lot easier for the judge to know what you're trying to show. Another thing I see quite often is either setups that are not safe. And now if you want to put an unsafe setup, the only place that really belongs is in scene where you can have a lot of fun. However, if you're doing a regular class, it should be a doable class for the horse and safe for the horse. So like let's say if the horse is moving, you often see uh, a picture of a wall behind him. It looks like he's ran through the wall or he's running at a person or there's a person standing where he would have just been. So take that into account when you're setting it up and make sure he could have real, realistically done what you're asking him to do without hitting anybody. For the Arabian regalia class, uh, there's various ways you can show this. Now there's the actual show as if the horse is showing in an Arabian show and that's the specific costume. There's Arabian dancing horses, and I put a video for some fun stuff. There's historic costumes, and there's Hollywood style. So do your research. Out of Hollywood style, I couldn't find anything, so I just picked some photos of horses. That's my husband in the background. And when you're showing, make sure with the Arabian that you provide documentation. Judges are not experts on every single thing. So you need to show that you are judging. You've done the work. You're an expert on this specific setup that you have done. So if you're taking this kind of picture and showing it as a uh, historic, it may not work. Do your research. And another thing is fun here with Arabian costumes is that you can use horses in different positions. Uh, I know in the class, if you're doing an Arabian class, it has to be either walking or cantering. If your model is trotting, you can say they're going to the class because horses trot with costumes on. I don't care what anybody says, just not in the class. So you have to be very specific with the position of your model and how you're showing it. Moving on to harness, I think one of my pet peeves is the lack of breaching. People often show in a fine harness on any horse in any position. Breaching is required on almost every setup. The only time you don't use breaching is if you're using a fine harness on a flat surface in the show or warming up for a show. As soon as you're on the road or doing obstacle courses, you have to have breaching. And if you do, don't have breaching, you find that the uh, actual carts have handbrakes for the driver. The, bre the breaching is the way for the horse to stop the cart and it is safe, it's required. You have to have it in almost every class. So make sure you document. If your horse doesn't have breaching, document it, unless it's an obvious fine harness, American saddlebred who obviously wouldn't have breaching. Now here's a draft horse harness style. Now draft horses can use collars or they can use breastplates, but make sure that it actually fits them. Don't have this coming way up and, and the rider tilted back. The cart for the rider should be horizontal. Sometimes the shafts go up on purpose, but if they don't, they shouldn't be on a huge angle. Make sure everything is fitting. She should tighten her rein up here, but that's her. She's actually driving. The whip needs to be in the right hand. In m many classes, you have to have an apron. So make sure you know what you're looking at for the breed, for the class, and document it correctly. Here's a case I find too. So you have a Morgan and you got it in class. You have the small cart. This cart is what you use for driving Morgans in class. Fine harness, one setup. However, here, this Morgan has been driven in an obstacle class. So it's completely different setup. He has to have his breaching. It's just completely different. So understand the class and show it accordingly. 
I've included some photos here of the parts of the harness, and you can see the different types of harness being used here. So understand which class for which harness. There's a combined driving one, a regular one, and a couple draft horses ones. So really understand where the parts are supposed to sit on the horse for the setup you're using. I've also added some photos of some historic harness, because they're quite different. Kind of fun to look at, and you can do all sorts of different things. And a fine harness. Now, if you're showing a historic costume, it's kind of a anything goes, but you have to have a reference. You can't assume the judge is going to just take your so-and-so named costume and, and take your word is exactly right. What you should do is show some nice pictures of the exact same costume that you're showing. And when you do, if you don't have a doll, you can actually have them holding the reins, the fake doll, out of the picture so it looks like at least the horse is standing there for some reason. Don't just have a costume and let your reins drop and say, hey, look at my pretty costume. Actually show it. So if you don't have a doll, put the reins outside or have a reason where the doll is. You know, why is the rider not there? Why is the horse just standing there with this absolutely stunning costume on it? The same goes for Native American regalia. It's very hard to find good references, so you have to do you have to do due diligence and find out what you're showing. Is it current? Is it historic? And I think one of the biggest problems I find in the Native American regalia is that parts of the stuff is not to scale. It kind of overwhelms the model. I've seen riders sitting too high up on the saddle. The saddle seems to be, I don't know, for some reason really raised. So get do your due diligence and uh, make sure everything's into scale. For parade class, um, again, a lot of things go. In a parade, all sorts of things go. We have parades here uh, in Ecuador, and the models are all passive, I'm sorry, the horses are all pacifinos, and they're doing completely different things. So whatever your parade is, document it. And if you're doing a standard parade, the biggest thing people always talk about is the drapes being longer than the stirrups. So uh, be careful of that. Again, document. If you're using a other costume, you can have a lot of fun with this. It can be a kid with their uh, horse dressed up as a bumblebee or whatever you want. Just make sure it's done safely. And uh, if it is something that requires documentation, documented, if it's just a kid having fun, you just need to tell them this at a fall fair or you're doing Halloween or whatever. But make sure the stuff fits and it's neat and tidy. I find a lot of those costumes tend to be very sloppy. So it should look realistic, safe, and tidy. If you're showing your model in a racing class, you'll notice uh, most judges, especially if they're in the U.S., they assume, and it's generally correct, that horses always race on the left lead. That's in the U.S. However, that's what most people as judges believe. Now, if you're showing in Britain, they go the other way. So you've really got to, especially if you're showing in the U.S., you have to document. You've got to document why that horse is going uh, clockwise. So you're always safe going counterclockwise in North America. So again, it's best to have a picture of your horse. Document why they're going the direction they are going. So uh, that's one of the things I noticed. Almost every model was going clockwise. And for me, that's just, you know, wrong. But I am wrong because I am North American based. If I was British based, then I would think that the models going the other way was incorrect. So that is something you should be aware of when you're uh, placing your models in a racing class. In other performance, there's all sorts of really neat classes you can do. However, running free Liberty is not a class. It's basically a halter horse uh, with a different name under it. Uh, other performance can be very, very in-depth. So if you do something very, very simple, you have very little chance of winning. So this is a place to have fun, be creative, and again, documentation. But um, it is not a scene class. So uh, don't confuse other performance with scene. Other performance should be an actual class uh, without all the fluff that you get in scene. Now, if we move to scene class, that's where you have fun. Pile all sorts of stuff in, be creative, do whatever you want. You can have a misbehaving horse, uh, fun, and in my opinion, you can pretty much do anything as long as it's, you know, I don't know, it can be anything pretty much. You don't even really need uh, reference material for this class. As long as everything's technical, it comes down to what the judge likes. And uh, a little humor can go a long way here. Now, this is the first time I've actually pulled an image of somebody's model from the class. 
I pull this as my judge's choice, and I'm putting this here because it exudes Arabian mares waiting for their owner, you know, somewhere a real Egyptian mare. Now, this is a good use of a model in a strange position that's not a performance position. Uh, it's good use of no rider because that mare really looks like she's sitting there watching her owner do whatever he's doing off in the background. And uh, it's a really, really good use of turning a, a non-performance horse into a performance horse. So I just want to wrap up quickly with an overall checklist for every single entry you do. Does your tack fit? Is it adjusted? Are your props background and everything synced with the horse? Your horse isn't running out of a wall or running over a rider. It matches, it's in scale. Does your setup look realistic? I mean, if you take a photo and put it next to a real horse, is it gonna look similar? Is somebody gonna say, wow, I thought that was real. That's what you're aiming for. Is the horse in the correct position for the event? If he is a galloping horse, don't even try to put him in Western pleasure. Now, is the rider involved in the event? Uh, they should be leaning in the right direction or sitting up straight. Their butt should be in the saddle. They should be looking in the right way. They should be part of the event, involved in it. Your document needs to be correct. Any images you provide need to be similar to the model setup that you're showing. I found too many uh, generalized ones that have nothing to do with the actual setup. Is it clean? Is there motion? If you have stuff, does it follow the motion? Okay, we are judging as judges on your ability to show, not just the price you paid for your tack. Have you shown that tack properly? Have you shown the model properly? It's just a model that's dropped on the table. We are judging you as showers. Did you do it right? Did you research? Do you understand? Is it safe? So get out there, do your research and have fun. This is how to learn about model horses. So that's my wrap up for the show. Thanks everybody for joining me. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any questions about showing, you can always contact me and ask about your, spe your specific setup. You can find me on Facebook or whatever. Just ask any questions and I'm, uh, I'm here to help you out. Anyways, ciao guys, and I'll see you later.